So, welcome to the uh, fifth lecture of the third module which is on finite state machine synthesis. So, in the uh, last lecture or in the uh, in the series of lectures in the design module of the course. So, what we have seen? We have seen that we start from design specification and from there we go on to high level synthesis and then we go for uh, 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 two level gate level synthesis that is uh, Boolean uh, binary uh, circuit uh, for, for the functions we have I mean from which we uh, the output we obtain from the high level synthesis we, uh, we really, uh, implement them in terms of gate logic gates. So, we go for two level mul, uh, logic gate synthesis and so forth. So, in other words we are transforming the input specification to high level synthesis and from high level synthesis the output is RTL based block level diagrams block level design uh, in terms of register transfer level blocks following that we go for uh, logic gate level synthesis and then we keep, keep on I mean going step after step. So, in the last few lectures on the design module we have seen that how can we can get starting from specification how can we get get the two level gate level implementation. But our discussion you might be noting uh, you might have noted that was restricted to combinational circuits in the main mainly in the mainly in the area of combinational circuits. Uh, that is we started with design specification and then we had some architectural diagrams and then when we went for the gate level synthesis we mainly restricted ourselves to uh, combinational circuits. So, we have seen uh, that the, the, the some of the exact algorithms like selecting uh, prime implicants and then going for branch and bound algorithm to implement a minimized two level uh, implementation in terms of logic gates. And in the last lecture we have seen how we can uh, go on for heuristics like espresso which can actually uh, go for a two level synthesis, but the I mean cost of execution is uh, much less or is computationally much less compared to branch and bound base algorithm. But whatever was the case our, uh, our main discussion was restricted for combinational circuits. Now, in today's lecture what we are going to do we will take you through uh, finite state machine based synthesis which is nothing but actually two level implementation when your circuits are sequential that is we have some flip flops or require some memory. So, that the circuit can, uh, is of sequential nature. So, how we can do that? So, you will realize that actually almost the same philosophy which we have used uh, in the two level synthesis will be applied over here, but also in addition we have to take care of the states. Okay. So, uh, um, uh, so whenever we talk about uh, this finite state machine or sorry whenever we talk about sequential circuits we know that they can be modeled in terms of a finite state machine because this is from our undergraduate uh, course on uh, flat that is automata theory we all, all know that given a circuit which is having sequential nature they can be implemented in terms of a finite state machine. So, finite state machines can be two types Moore or Mealy. So, we will see one by one. So, the basic idea already we know from our undergraduate studies that given a sequential circuit we require a finite state machine to model it. So, what is a finite state machine? of milli type we will see what is a Moore type is. So, but let us first say with the finite state machine. So, we it is a 6 tuple. So, we, we consist of the input alphabets ok. So, in the case of digital it may be the inputs uh, primary inputs uh, S is the finite set of states ok. This is the next state function that will tell you that given an input and a current state what will be the next state. The initial state of the reset states that when when with the states from you start is the output alphabet that is the output corresponding to each state and there is an output function. Okay, so, this is the basic definition of a um, uh, what you call fine mini type of a finite state machine. So, in fact, it will take some inputs and uh, based on the present state it will go to a next state and also it will generate some outputs that is the basic idea and of, of course, this is what is required in a sequential circuit. So, a sequential circuit can be easily modeled in terms of a finite state machine. Okay, so, there are two types the one is the Moore type and the Mealy type. So, this was a Mealy type machine. So, what is the Moore type? So, Moore type machine is the is a case where the outputs do not depend on the present inputs and it only depends on the state value. So, what is the case? So, in this case the output function here you can see is dependent on both the primary inputs and the states. So, it is a Mealy machine, but if I remove the inputs then actually S all the states will uh, correspond to some output then it becomes a Moore machine. So, of course, Mealy machine is a more generalized form of uh, what you can say finite state machine. So, so, here in this lecture we will concentrate, uh, con I mean concentrate mainly on Mealy machine because Moore machine can be considered as a subclass of this one. Okay. So, okay, so, the algorithm I mean uh, so, in this case we will find out algorithms to uh, we, I mean of course, if we tell you al about the algorithms which can synthesize Mealy machines Moore machines of course, can be easily synthesized using them. And mainly what we will see, so how we can synthesize uh, or how we can implement synthesize means in, if you talk corresponding to previous lectures how we can have a two level implementation for a sequential circuit that is a uh, given a sequential circuit or sequential behavior basically you model it in terms of finite state machine and then from the finite state machine we have to uh, generate a two level implementation 
two level circuit implementation for the finite state machine. So, okay. So, what are the basic basic steps that will be involved are first we have to minimize the number of states. Okay. So, what are the uh, basically uh, finally we will have to use our old espresso algorithm or your branch and bond algorithm for the minimization. But before that as the circuit is now sequential we have to go for some uh, uh, what you can say called predefined or uh, pre uh, preliminary steps or pre-processing steps so that it, it can be brought down to the level where it can be where espresso or you can say the branch and bound type of algorithms can be applied. So, if the circuit is to purely combinational that you have input and output behavior given to you that is sum of product form is given to you then what you can do you can go for either branch and bound based algorithms or you can go for espresso to minimize that. But in this case of sequential circuit along with the input output behavior we also have states. Okay, so, we have to do some pre-processing so that it can be brought to the format of a combinational circuit kind of a thing so that directly espresso or other uh, synthesis algorithms can be applied. So, what is the first step of the pre-processing? We actually go for state minimization because some of the states will be equivalent. We will see in the lecture what do you mean by equivalent states. So, some of the states will be equivalent. So, we have to mask those equivalent states. Then you have to go for state encoding okay, because their circuit may have 10 states after say equivalence merging we may have 5 states. So, you all the states you have to encode with 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1. So, if there are 4 states you states you require 2 bits to encode. If there are 3 states you require uh, if there are more more than 4 states and, and, and about less than 8 states then you require the, uh, 3 bits to encode and so forth. I think you know that is uh, that is log of 2 in the number of states upper bound can be giving you the number of bits required to encode the state. This is from your undergraduate studies. Okay. Then you find out Boolean functions representing the next state and the output that we will see and then you go for 2 level minimization of this function. Basically this is nothing but this will convert the sequential circuit to a combinational behavior and for, from there you can use actually the uh, heuristics which you have discussed heuristics or branch and bound algorithm which you have discussed in the last few lectures. So, basically these are the 3 pre-processing steps minimization of the equivalent state states encoding and determine of Boolean functions. Okay, for representing the next state and the output. So, we will see with examples what do they mean. So, once you do that you are ready for uh, min, uh, 2 level minimization using the algorithms already discussed. Okay. So, if you look at this is the architecture of a this is the architecture of a sequential circuit represented in terms of finite state machine. So, this is your input primary input this is the output lambda is the output function. So, you have uh, this uh, you can see the output will be uh, value of the present states as well as the inputs with the milli machine and actually you should also have the next state. So, next state is dependent on again x and s and the present state and the input. So, this is your present state, this is your next state. So, after one clock pulse the next state will become present state. These are all from your undergraduate studies on digital circuits and this is basically your present state. Okay. So, this is your combinational circuit which is determining what will be the output and what will be the next state based on the input and the present state. So, if it becomes a Moore machine you do not have to con consider the input. So, output will be dependent only on the present state. Okay. So, this is what is the basic architecture of a, uh, a finite state machine uh, in, in which is to be implemented in terms of a circuit kind of a thing. Okay. So, now our idea is that we have to synthesize this part. Okay. This is all already flip flops nothing there is nothing required to synthesize. So, what do we require? We require for what values of inputs and what is the present state what is actually this one and this one. So, you can consider that this is a combinational circuit. So, based on some primary inputs and the present state values you have to generate the outputs and generate the next state. So, once we get for what input and present state combination combinations what are the outputs and what are the next states. Okay. So, you can easily think that it is a uh, 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 synthesis problem for a combinational circuit. So, you can easily uh, go about using our old algorithms like branch and bound and S process to solve the problem. But here we actually we require the present state which is not present in the combinational circuit synthesis that is one thing which is required. So, you have to go for uh, state equivalence merging as well as state encoding. So, once you encode the state, so you know that if the present state is 0 0 the input is 1, the output is 1 and the next state is say uh, 0 1, the next state is 0 1. So, you know that in one say input is 1, present state is 0 0, the output has to be 1 and the next state is 0 1. So, it is actually output is 1 and next state is say 0 1. So, immediately in the like dot 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 you can make up a table like this you can make up a table sorry this one is not there you make up a table this is your output next state this is your input and this is your present state. Okay, then you can easily make up a table and go for combinational circuit synthesis. So, that is a very simple idea of how you can go about synthesizing a sequential circuits. Okay. So, next we will now we will take some examples and explain all these things. Okay. So, uh, we will next in the next figure we will represent what is saying a single transition graph will be used to represent an FSM for when you are going to synthesize the circuit. So, that is a one standard way of representing an FSM when you will be using a circuit synthesis for them. Okay. So, in STG every node corresponds to a state and every arc corresponds to a transition. The level on the arc states which inputs enable the transitions and the output produce 
is also given in the transition. Okay? And then we will see, I mean the cube table representation is suitable for FSM synthesis, the cube table has inputs, present state values and the next state and output. Let us see all these things what I have told you using an example. So, this is your STG of a finite state machine. So, what is in state S1, if you apply a 0 as input, the output is 1 and you go to state X2. So, you see uh, the present state is S1, the input is 0, okay? the, out, uh, the output is 1 and the next state is S2. Okay, similarly, you can easily see let us take another example from state 1 itself in from state 1 if you apply a 1 from state 1 if you apply a 1 okay, then you go to state S4 you go to state S4 and the output is a 1. So, that in this way the whole table can be made from the STG of this one. Okay, now, what you have to do now these are your inputs this part is your input. Okay. So, based on the present uh, uh, inputs and the present state values, what are the output, uh, what is the next state values and what are the outputs. So, okay, so for that this is actually you will these are your I mean inputs, I mean you can call these an inputs and you will be using uh, the two level implementation synthesis tools to find out to implement logic for this one and combination circuit for this one. But we will see that, but there is one more thing we have to do. So, in this case you see S1, S2, S3, S4 are now in terms of some alphabets or some names. So, we have to give some encoding for this one. So, now you can see that we have 4 states. So, 2 bits are enough to encode it. So, you can say the S0 is 00, S2 is 0, 1, 10 and 1, 1 kind of a thing. So, you have to give some values to this and then we can go about the synthesis. So, all these things we will see. This is the example which shows how a table can be converted. Okay. So, now uh, once again we will see in the next step that first step was if there are some equivalent states we will merge them. Okay. So, we will find I mean in, in, in a few next few slides we will give formally the definition of equivalence and all, but for the time being let us just sorry. Let us for the time being just assume that the S1 and S2 are equivalent. So, how they are equivalent and all? So, we will see. Okay, so, in this case you can see that I mean the formal definitions will be coming up shortly, but for the time being just assume that S1 and S2 are equivalent. So, if S1 and S2 are equivalent, so they will be merged okay? and then you can see that from if you apply uh, uh, 0 from S1 you go to S2, if you apply a 0 from S2 you, you go to S1 and the output in both the cases are 1. So, you will have S1, the input is 0, the output is 1 that way you can design. Okay, now, from S1 if you apply a 1 1, so you will go to S4. Okay. So, this is actually 1 and a 1. Now, obviously from S2 also you have you apply a 1 and you go for S4 that is why it is possible. From S1 if you apply a 1 you get the output 1 go to state S4. From S2 also the same thing happens. So, from the combined state if you can go to S4 in terms of this one. Okay. And then also you can see from S3 S3 you can have a self loop, but if you apply a 1 and a 1 output is 1 you get apply a 1 output you get as 1 you go to state S1. So, from S1 you will you can go over here correct all these other things will remain same kind of a thing. From here obviously, from S4 if you apply a 0, you go to state 0, uh, get a 0 and go to state S2, the button S1 and S2 are merged. So, you will have a star trace transition like this and similarly, the whole graph actually will look like something like this. Now, in this case what we have done, S1 and S2 has been merged. Okay, so, now we actually get this as a reduced finite state machine. Okay, but how you can formally say that S1 and S2 are equivalent, so all those things will be looking up just in a few, 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 few moments. Let us just complete the example and then we will see how formally we can define that. So, this is now your finite state machine where S n 1 S 2 are merged. Now, we have 3 states. So, again uh, uh, 2 bits will be required to encode this one. Okay? So, let us see we can take some encoding scheme. So, in this case it is they are saying that S 1 is encoded as 0 0, S 3 is encoded at 1 0 and S 4 is encoded as 0 1. So, now what, what is the case now? So, you can see just the whole table I am redrawing, but now in this case S 2 is no longer there because S 2 is merged with S 1, but now we can just see what happens. So, if you apply as, uh, as S 1, if you apply a 0, you get the output as 1 and go back to S 1. So, you can see from this is nothing but S 1, this is S 1 and the output is 1. So, if you apply a 0 over here, in the present state is S1 that is 0 0 is encoded as 0 0, the next state is nothing but again S 1 itself, so the output is 0 0 and the uh, output that is the uh, output function generated the output is 1. Okay. So, in this case you write 0 0 present state input is 0, the next state is again 0 0 self loop and the output is a 1. From here from S 1 if you apply a 1 the output is 1 and you go to state S 4. So, you can see if I apply a 1 over here present state is 0 0 the next state is S 4, S 4 is encoded as 0 1. So, this is 0 1 and the output is a 1. Similarly, the whole table can be drawn. Okay. Now, after drawing this table what do you see? 
now what you have to do so you you should have combinational circuit for s0 prime s1 prime and output okay so if you see that if 0 0 0 the s uh, 0 0 0 if 0 0 0 is the input and that is this one so this is the mean term so in this case the output is 0 and also for s0 prime and s1 it is the is also 0 and the output is 1 okay so if the input is 0 1 0 0 1 0 the s0 prime is 0 and s1 prime is 1 and the output is 1 okay so it is 0 0 0 so it is corresponds to 0, this corresponds to 4, this 0, 1, 0, this is 2, 0, 1, 0, uh, 1, 1, 0, it is 6, 0, 0, 1 is 1 and 1, 0, 1 is 5. So, you have 0, 1, 2, uh, 4, 5. So, some do not care, obviously will come into picture. So, in this case you can think uh, 0, 1 is there, 2 is there, 3 is not there. So, 3 is a do not care, 4 is there, 5 is there, 6 is there, 7. So, you have do not do uh, 2 do not care as 1, 1, 1 and you do not have a do not care as 0, 1, 1. This is the case because we do not have any state encoded as 1, 1. So, uh, 1, 1 uh, as the present state or the next state whatever you can consider. So, from uh, state 1, 1 that is the present state 1, 1 input is 0 or 1 whatever the case this is a do not care condition. So, while minimizing this you can use uh, this uh, uh, 3 and 7 that is 0, 1, 1 and 1, 1, 1 as the do not care. So, okay, now let us see what is the synthesis picture will look like. So, you can find out just if you look at these terms. So, in this case you can see uh, this uh, we have only two ones over here. So, 1 0 1 and 0 0 1 0 that is uh, 0 1 0 that is 2 and this is 5. So, these are the two cases only when in this case S 0 prime is a 1. So, in this case you can see that is uh, 0 1 1 sorry S 0 prime is uh, 1 0 1 that is 5. So, that is 1 0 1 that is 5 and 2 that is uh, 0 1 0. So, these are the two mean terms corresponding to S naught prime. Similarly, we will find out that the mean term for S 1 prime is this one and the mean terms for out 1 is this one. Now, we have two do not care as 1 uh, sorry uh, 0 1 1 and 1 1 1 because 1 1 is not used in and carrying. But now, now so these are your equations. So, now you can easily find out that this has been now converted into minimization by two level minimization function in using any of the schemes we have discussed in the last lecture like uh, last two three lectures that is your branch and bound or espresso. So, if you minimize this you will find out that just you can apply this at your home and you can find out uh, just you can do some calculations using espresso or you can use your exact minimizers then you can find out that this can be reduced to something like this and here we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so this is have now 11 literals so now from initially how many literals were there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 from 18 literals by minimization we have got about 11 literals so this is how you actually convert uh, sequential circuit synthesis to a uh, uh, what you can call combination circuit synthesis. So, what do you do? You have a uh, circuit like a finite state machine like this and this is a table like this. So, S this is called an STG. So, you merge the equivalent states. So, after merging the equivalent states you have something like this. Then you go for state encoding which is in this case is now S 1 is represent 0 0, S 3 is 1 0 and S 4 is 0 1. So, you go for the encoding then you make this table. So, once you have this table this in the now no longer remains a sequential circuit problem it becomes a combinational circuit synthesis you synthesize that and you get finally the minimized two level implementation which is having some lit even literals in this present case. So, this is how our sequential circuit synthesis goes. So, basically sequential circuit synthesis is nothing but a combinational circuit synthesis but with some pre-processing steps like merging equivalent states and finding out state encoding. Now, we will see another interesting thing. Okay, now, let us change the state encoding. So, in this case we have given state encoding as uh, 0 0 1 0 1 1. So, who has given this how it came from here. So, we could have also started with 1 1 0 1 and 1 1 some, 1 0 something like this. So, any state encoding you could have used. So, let us see with another state encoding what is the case. So, in this case there S 1 is represented as 0 1, S 3 is represented as 1 1 and S 4 is represented as 1 0. This is the case. Now, you will find out that uh, so present state is S 0, S 0. So, you apply a uh, 0, the present state is 0 1 because now S 0 is not encoded as 0 0, it is encoded as 0 1. So, this is how it has been changed and the output is 1. Similarly, from uh, S 0 if you apply a 1, so next state is 1 0. So, 1 0 is nothing but S 4. So, if you can see the figure, so if you apply a 1 from S 1, it will go to S 4 and the output is a 1. So, that is being stated. So, now the uh, S 4 is encoded as 1 0. So, from S 0 if you apply a 1. So, S 0 0 1 then, then you go to state S 4 whose encoding is 1 0 and the output is 1. So, if you just represent it in terms of 
mean terms and uh, some SOB form. So, you will get this expression for F0 prime S1 prime N O. Okay? So, here again we have this do not care. Now, here the do not care terms will be different because in this case the present 0 0 encoding is not used. So, if 0 0 encoding is not used. So, your do not care terms will be 1 0 0 and 0 0 0. So, you have these two do not cares. If you just see, so you have these two do not cares like uh, this is 0 0 0 and 1 0 0. These are the two do not care terms and this is your expression. You can easily find out that these are your mean terms. So, expression in terms of S0, S1, S0 prime, S1 prime and O can be found out. Now, again by using this binary minimization techniques like espresso or whatever you can use. So, you can find out that this will be the final expression. So, here we are having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, we have 10 literals. So, you see now what the interesting thing has happened is. So, uh, with this type of state encoding like 0, 0, 1, 0 and 0, 1 and the number of literals required was 11. But with this new state encoding, the number of literals required are 10. So, not only the preprocessing steps you, you can take arbitrarily, but you have to be very careful that the state encoding has a great impact on the area of the circuit. So, now uh, previously from lectures we have seen that in combinational circuit synthesis, if you are going for an exact algorithm, so we can get an optimal uh, representation in two level implementation repre representation you have. But then we can find out, found out that that is, used to take long amount of time. So, we had find out gone for some heuristics and you, uh, sometimes we get also suboptimal implementation uh, in, uh, in terms of number of gates. So, the, you may, may land up in taking some more gate or resources than uh, it would have been done in the most optimal case. Okay. So, similarly in this case, now the state encoding is also becoming a big problem here. So, you say for example, if you have uh, say 100 states, okay, so uh, say, uh, uh, say for example, let us say that you have say, five, uh, say 7 states. Sorry, let us take another number say 10 states. So, if you have 10 states that means you require 4 bits to represent them. 4 bit means 16 values you can have 0 0 is from 0 0 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 1 these are the range you have. Now, you have only 10 states. So, among the 16 values so 0 0 0 0 0 to dot 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 1 1 1 1 which of them you will be using for this uh, encoding these 10 states and what state will be encoded by what is again actually a very very exponential problem because here also the subspace is very very high. So, what is the subspace if you have n bits to encode. So, there is 2 to the power n combinations available. Now, say you have only k states. So, this permutation k. So, among them you have you have to take any any uh, k k k uh, among the among if there are n bits which are represented to encode it. So, to the power n possible values encoding values will be there and if there are k states to represent to be represented. So, you can use any one of these to the power n patterns available in this. So, the solution space is to the power n permutation you can have uh, combinations and then you can permute among them k. So, the you can understand that if n is 200 inputs are uh, 200 bits may be available for encoding and the number of states are say about uh, 2 to the power 5 or something like this. So, you can find out the solution space is very very high and depending on the selection of this encoding and which states are encoding with which values will greatly impact the circuit area. So, not only the synthesis uh, in case of uh, uh, I mean this what you can say in case of this uh, final state machine synthesis this uh, choosing a proper state encoding is again an exponential problem because the solution space is very high because there are two if there are n bits to be represented that is used, used in encoding like for example, if you have 3 states, but still you require 2 bits to encode them because 3 states require the either 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1. So, 1 uh, in, uh, and the numbers like, like in the previous example like we had 3 states. Okay. So, we have 3 states here, but number of bits required will be 2. So, if there are 2 bits means 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1. So, 2 to the power 2 that is equal to 4 combinations of input variables are available, but among these 4 any 3 you can take and you can use them in again in permutated way that you can use 0 0 say you use 0 0 0 1 and 1 0 for encoding 1 1 you leave. Now, this 0 0 0 1 and 1 0 can be again permuted among this. So, this can be 0 0 this can be 0 1 this can be 1 0, but again you can also change this as 1 0 and this is 0 0 and so forth. So, this way actually makes the solution space very very high and choosing the most optimal what do I say most op optimal state encoding is again a big problem. So, here in this lecture again we will see some heuristic to solve the problem. So, now the se sequential circuit synthesis actually has many preprocessing step. The first preprocessing step is merging of equivalent states. So, we will see an exact algorithm for this because that algorithm is not a very complex algorithm that is to find out equivalent states. So, we will see as exact algorithm for this. Next is find out good state encoding. So, again good state encoding the, as the solution space is very very high the problem is exponential and so we will see a heuristic for this. So, the heuristic will try to give you some kind of an optimal uh, not an optimal, but some kind of optimal or near optimum solution for state encoding that will try to give you the minimal uh, hardware representation or minimum gate level implementation. So, once that is done, so you convert into the table and once the table is done then you go for uh, binary 
sorry boolean circuit synthesis which we have already seen so basically in this lecture so now we'll see two methods or uh, two methods for two pro solving two problems one is finding equivalent states and merging them because unnecessarily if you have too many states in the circuit which are equivalent unless and you will be having a large amount of area so we'll see how states can be encoded and we'll see that the problem is a bit simple and so we can use an exact algorithm for this and next will be state encoding so as we've already seen that the state space is very very high so if the state space is very very high then what happens that uh, I mean solution space is very very high. So, you, if you want to find out the most optimal, so most op sorry most optimum point or the best point for uh, finding out the solution that is the best point in terms of uh, state encoding which is going to give you the minimum gate implementation is a very difficult problem and or complexity will take you very long time. So, we will see a heuristic algorithm for that ok. So, let us first see uh, come by what do you mean by equivalent states ok. So, uh, we till now we have discussed that the equivalent states can be merged. So, now how, uh, how do you define a state equivalence. So, state equivalence are defined in the following manner. So, there are two states S1 and T1 in a circuit. So, you say that S1 is a state and T1 is a state. Now, you are applying some input symbol this x0, x2, xk minus 1. So, you are applying some state say input say x0 and then you go for somewhere then you apply x2 and dot 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 ok. And, this, this, and suppose this string that is x0, x2 dot dot produce one run that is some states you are going to get that is S1 s 2 dot 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 and s k plus 1 and another run this one that is from s 1 if you are applying input x 0 x 2 dot 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 say you are getting one set of string which is nothing one set of uh, uh, one set of uh, what you can solve one set of outputs you are going to get ok which is nothing but say uh, this s 1 s 2 s 3 and this one ok starting from s 1 if you apply these inputs you are getting these states ok and the set of states if you are applying from t 1 if you apply the same inputs from state t 1 say you are going to get as uh, t 0 t 1 t 2 dot 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 ok and let the outputs corresponding to this be s 0 s 2 s k minus 1 that is if you are starting from s 1 if you apply x 0 then the output is output s 0 ok corresponding to this one that is now you are having that uh, state 2. So, the output will be this one again dot 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 the output is this one and now again this is another run from uh, t, t 1 then t 2 something like this This is the another run with the same inputs from state t 1 ok and the string output generated is uh, o t 0 o t 2 and this one be the corresponding strings that is from state s 1 and state, state t 1 there are two states you are applying this input this is the input sequence and the output obtained are this one if you start from S 1 and the output obtained is this one if you start from T 1 ok. So, that is the state S 1 you are applying some inputs x 0 x 1 and you are getting some outputs they are nothing but this one ok. Now, from state T 1 you are applying the same sequence of inputs and you are getting some outputs they are nothing but this one ok. They are the output strings. Now, the string this one that is this input is said to be k length indistinguishable for this that is there is a this this this, is this sequence of inputs ok is indistinguishable for state S 1 and T 1 k length this obviously we assume that k length if all the outputs are same that is if this outputs and these outputs are always same then you can say that this input string cannot distinguish s1 and t1. So, in fact, what is happening I have one state t s1 and one state t1 I am applying x0 x2 dot 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 and the outputs I am getting from x s1 are os os0 os2 and dot 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 and from t1 if I apply the same input the output received is ot2 o sorry ot0 ot2 and so forth and all these are equivalent x o, this one is equivalent this one this one is equivalent to this one and so forth then actually this uh, this input string cannot distinguish between s1 and t1 ok it is saying that and now if you take the reverse way then you can say that a k length string k length distinguishing sequence that is if this length I consider as k ok can distinguish between state s1 and t1 if and only if some output is different like example for example I have uh, say that this state s1 and this state t1 we apply same this is s1 and this is t1 you apply same inputs which is x0 dot 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 xk minus 1 same thing and at all these states you traverse to if there is at least one state output which is different then you can say that that input string can differentiate between s1 and t1 but if the if there is no output difference corresponding to the states if you start from t1 or s1 for this inputs then you say that this string cannot distinguish between these two states will uh, this is a bit complex definition but when we will take an example we will understand very simple let me tell you that this is your say state s1 and this is your say state t1 you apply 1 and you get the output 0 here you apply 1 you get the output 0 kind of a thing 
Okay, then you say that this is set S2 and this is set T2. You apply a 1, you get a Z1, sorry, and here also you apply a 1 and you get a 1. Then I can say that if the if from state S1 and T1, if I apply 1 and a 1, then 2 length differentiation cannot be obtained. Okay, so 2 length differentiations cannot be obtained. So, what do you mean by 2 length differentiation? That is, if I apply 1 first input second input in sequence both the uh, uh, then the output is 0 in the first case and 1 in the second case and the 1 in the second case. Okay. Now, in this if you apply the same thing that is 1 first and 1 second the output is again 0 which is same as this and the output is again same as this. So, you can say that the two length inputs of 1 1 cannot distinguish between these states S 1 and T 1. However, if you can say that just take a different way. So, if I say that if I apply a 1, the output is 1, again 1, 1, here apply I put is 1, this is 0 and apply 1, you get the answer as 1. Then you can see that the 2 length strength can distinguish between S1 and T1, because if you apply a 1, the output is 1, if you apply a 1 from T1, output is 1, fine. But the next input, if you are from S1, if you have started your journey from S1, from this for the second output, the out second input 1, the output is 0 and if you have started your journey from T2, then the output is 1, so there is a distinguishing. So, this 1, 1 length, 2 length string, 1, 1 can distinguish between S1 and T1 if this is the case, but if this is the output corresponding to 1, then you can say that the input strain length of 2 cannot distinguish between S1 and S2. So, that is actually being told by this complex definition which is being seen over here. Okay. So, now let us see uh, what do you mean by two states S1 and T1 are k length equivalent. So, we are writing this as this if and only if that does not exist a distinguishing sequence of k or less than this. Okay, that means, two state S1 and T1 are k length equivalent if there does not exist any input string which is less than or equal to k which can distinguish them. That is to distinguish between S1 and T1 you require input length of more than k. Okay, now, two states are equivalent if and only if this n or the length is equal to the number of states. So, for example, let us assume that your graph totally has 10 states and now if you can say that there are no strings which are less than length. So, your uh, graph has state 10 states. Okay your graph has 10 states correct. Now, you say that for states S1 and T1, T1 all this there is no string whose length is less than or equal to 10 which can distinguish this. That means, what there does not exist any string because 10 is the maximum number of states in your circuit or 10 in your uh, fine state machine or STG. So, that means, you in, in no way you can distinguish between S1 and T1 because why? Why is this so? Because the, the number of states which are present in your system is 10 and all the strings which are length 10 or less cannot distinguish between S1 and T1. So, S1 and T1 are equivalent states. Okay? So, now you can define a binary relation R k S1 T1 belonging to S cross S. The, uh, R, this binary relation is defined at S1 and T1 if S1 is k equivalent to T1. That is, uh, we can have some equivalent clusters like E k 1 that means, what do you what do you say? So, what is the E k 1 means? It means all the equivalent all the states which are k equivalent. These are all the sets which are uh, another set of states which are k equivalent. These are another set of states which are k equivalent. That means, actually given this set of states, we can partition it into some L part L equivalent partitions 1, 2, 3, 4 some L equivalent partitions where each partition will comprise states which are k equivalent. Okay? That means, there is no strings of length k or less which can distinguish them. So, if you make k is equal to s where s is the number of states in the system. So, it will be uh, this uh, equivalence clustering will be nothing but all the sets of equivalent states. In other words, so if you find if you say that there are n number of states in a circuit in a I mean machine or in, a, in your finite state machine and for some state S1 and S2 there does not exist any string of length S or less which can distinguish them that means they cannot be distinguished in your machine. So, they become your equivalent states, but it, it is you are totally equivalent in the circuit, but sometimes we can also define one equivalent, two equivalent, three equivalent. So, what do you mean by one equivalent? one equivalent means that these states cannot be distinguished by giving a single input. Two equivalence means these states cannot be distinguished by giving any input sequence of two, two, two inputs, two bit input sequence and so forth. So, in, the, in a general way, this is actually uh, binary, uh, binary equivalence for up to k. So, it says that by giving an input of length k or less, if you are, you cannot distinguish between states of class E 1, E 2, E 3 and so forth. Okay. So, this was some complex mathematical definition, but we will try to give you an example to see what do you exactly mean and then we will see what are this equivalent partitioning means. So, again take a take a 
example okay so but before going to the example just keep this some small things in mind so what do you mean by equivalent states two states are equivalent if you cannot distinguish them so how can you distinguish states we can distinguish states by giving some similar say two states s1 and s2 how do you find out that they are different you have to find out different you have to give some same inputs to both these states you have to start from the two states obviously you have to start from these two states and then this is say state s1 and this is state s2 then you have to have give some similar inputs like 1 0 1 0 1 1 1 say 1 0 1 0 1 1 1 so you go through a sequence of states if you at least find out one state where the output is 0 over here and 1 over here or vice versa then you can show that s1 and s2 can be distinguished or in other words you can say t2 we are generally referring to so you can say that s1 and t2 can be distinguished but if you find out that up to going up going by up to say k length inputs this number of input is 10 k then you find out that whatever output is given if my journey starts from s1 the same outputs i am sorry whatever outputs I am getting if I start my journey from S1 same kind of outputs I am getting if I start my journey from S2 up to inputs of length k then it simply means that by k length inputs I cannot distinguish these two states and if this k is equal to the total number of states in your system then these two becomes equivalent state because nobody can distinguish them ok. So, these are the two some key rules you have to keep in mind ok because we can distinguish states only by the outputs for similar input different outputs for similar inputs ok. So, this is your circuit. So, let me just say let us say state S1 and state say S2 ok. So, now we let us say what does that mean. So, if, if I say that state S1 and S2 are one bit different one one sequence distinguishable how so from s1 if i apply a 1 you get a 0 but from s2 if i apply a 1 i get a 1 so very easily you can say that s1 and s2 are one bit or one string equivalent non equivalent that is we have s1 here and we have s2 s2 here so if you apply a 1 over here you get a 0 as answer from s2 if you apply a 1 you get a, you get a 1 and so s1 and s2 can be distinguished by one bit input that is a 1 now very interestingly if you say s1 and s3 so, if you take S1 and S3 you see from S1 if I apply a 1 you go to a 0 from S1 also if I apply a 1 you get a 0 you can see this ok from S3 if I apply a 1 sorry from S3 if I apply sorry sorry if from S3 if I apply a 1 I get a 1 and go somewhere and the output is 0 ok from S1 also if I apply a 1 the output is 0 and I go to state S4. So, by applying from S1 if I apply a 1 I get 0 if from S3 if I also apply a 1 I get 0 ok 1. Now, also you see the other way. So, by 1 applying a 1 in S1 and S3 they cannot be distinguished. Now, let us try with 0. So, from S1 if you apply a 0 you get the output 1 and from S3 if I apply a 0 again also you get the output as 1. So, from S1 if you apply a 0 you get a 1 and from S3 also if you apply a uh, 0 you get a 1. So, S, S1 and S3 cannot be distinguished by a single bit input. So, you have to you can put S3 over here. Similarly, you can also check for S5. Now, if you see S5, so now you can check S5. So, from S5 again let me erase up everything. Okay, so, if you take S5, so from S5 if you apply a 1, 0, 1 you get a 0, same thing in case of this. Now, if you apply a 0 from S1 and also from S5 if you apply a 0, you get the output. As 0. So, same way S5 also cannot be distinguished by applying a 1 bit see se se 1 bit input sequence. So, they are all so you can say that S1, S3 and S5 are equivalent this way you can say this is a uh, is a equivalence relation if k is equal to 1. So, you can say that S1 is equivalent in 1 to S3 equivalent to 1 to S5. That means, what by applying a 1 bit input sequence or 1 input sequence S1 and S3 and S5 cannot be distinguished. So, they becomes a equivalence class for string input length of 1. So, that is what is being told a binary relation this is defined as this. So, here k is equal to 1. So, the relation is an equivalence class on the set of states and the partitions on the sets into disjoint equivalent classes for some given case. So, here k is equal to 1. So, if you consider k equal to 1 then we can see that S1 and S3 and S5 make one equivalence class. Similarly, you can find that S3, S4 and X6 will also make an equivalence class. I am not explicitly showing you can easily find out that. So, by in, for input strings of length 1 S1, S3 S3 and S5 and S2, S4 and X6 are actually equivalent classes. So, they cannot be distinguished by giving a equivalent by from equivalent I mean I mean S1, S3 and S5 and S2 and S4 and S6 they cannot be differentiated I mean uh, 
you cannot differentiate in between these three and also you cannot differentiate in between these three by applying a single bit input single length inputs but of course by by you can differentiate between these two clusters by applying any single bit inputs like as i told you s1 can be easily differentiated from s2 because from s1 if i apply a 1 i get answer 0 and from s2 if i apply a 1 you get the answer as 1 output as also 1 and a 0 are different. So, very easily you can distinguish between this by applying a single sequence of inputs. So, you can dis distinguish between these two clusters, but in inside a cluster you cannot define using single bit inputs. So, that is what is being actually written over here. So, how do you start? Initially we consider all the states to be equivalent. Now, we apply 0 and 1 inputs to all the states. Okay. So, if we apply uh, 1 to these things you are from S1 you will go to S4 kind of a thing. Now, if you apply, so initially what do you do? Initially you consider all these states to be equivalent S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6 all are equivalent. If you apply 1 and 0 to this, so you are you are going to next state will be S4, S6, X2, S6, S6, X3 corresponding to this if you apply a 1 and S5, S4, S5, S2, S3, S2 this is the next state if you apply a 0 to all these states respectively. Okay. So, in other words if you do this, this the next states will be this and this respectively. The outputs corresponding to this are I mean for example, if you apply a 1 to all this you are this is your next state okay. and if you apply a 0 to all these states the next state sequence is this one and the outputs are nothing but this and this. So, you can see that these three are there is S0, S3 and S5 output is 0, 0, 0 they cannot be distinguished and 2, 4 and 6 the output is 1, 1, 1. So, again they cannot be distinguished. So, we have this one and this one as explained below. So, now this is your class S1, S3, S5, S2, S4 and X6. So, if you apply a 1 to these states, so you are going to state S5, S4, S5 whatever, but outputs are all 1. So, by applying a 1 you cannot generally distinguish between S1, S2, S3 by applying 1 to these states in the first go you cannot distinguish between anything. Sorry, if sorry, I am sorry, if you apply a 0 over here, the outputs are all 1 that you can easily verify. So, if you apply a sorry, so uh, this one has put the outputs corresponding to 1 and 0 are this. So, these are your outputs. So, if you just see that if I apply a 0 over this, so the outputs corresponding to this will be something like this. And the even if you apply a 1, so the, the this, this is the output. So, here you can distinguish between the first position, second position, second, third, but you cannot distinguish between first, third, and fifth second, fourth and sixth. So, this way you are getting this equivalence class. Now, you have to keep on doing it. Okay. So, now your classes are this and this. Okay. Now, we again try to repeat to this one. So, now again what you do? You uh, Now, the runs correspond. Now, we take these two states and we will now repeat this. So, if you the runs corresponding to 1 and 0 when applied to this that is S1, S3 and F5 you apply a 1. So, the next state you can find out from the figure are S4, S2 and X6 and if you apply a 0 the outputs the next states corresponding to this are S5, S5 and S3 okay? and the outputs corresponding to this are this and this. Okay. So, now you can see you can see that from if you apply a 1 over here. So, from S1 you go to S4, from S3 you go to S2 and from S5 you go to S6 and the outputs are all zeros. Okay. And again if you apply a 0 from this you go to S5, S5 and S3 and outputs are all 1s. So, again actually still by actually applying the second bit as input first time we have already seen that S1, S3 and 5 cannot be distinguished by a single bit input single sequence of input. Now, we are applying 2 bits input, 2 bits second sequence we are applying, but still the output set is S4, S2 and S6. So, this set of states has been equivalent from the previous run already we have seen and if you are applying a 0, then the next sequence of states from this one are next set of states are S5, S5 and S3. So, they are again equivalent in themselves and the outputs are also similar. So, even by applying a 2 bit inputs S1, S3 and S5 cannot be distinguished. So, you can write S12 that is length of strings 2 cannot distinguish between S1, S3 and S5. So, similarly you can write for this one. So, that is what is the idea. So, what we have seen that is if you apply 1 bit input you cannot distinguish between S1, S3 and S5, but you can distinguish between S1, S2 and S1, S4 something like this. But even after applying a second bit input or second sequence of input you cannot distinguish between S1, S3 and S5 because the next state corresponding to 1 is this, the next, the next state corresponding to E11 when the input is 0 is this and again these clusters are also comprising of equivalent states and the outputs are similar in this case. So, they cannot be distinguished. So, you can easily write that S1 and S3 and S5 they cannot be distinguished among themselves when you are applying the second bit of inputs. Now, we will try for the second cluster we have. So, second cluster was S2, S4 and S6. Now, again we apply 1 and 0 to this. So, if we apply a 1, so the next state is X6, X6 and X3. So, now you can see that from the previous exam, previous run we know that S6 and S3 can be extended. So, what basically we have done from S2 we had S4 and we have S6. Okay. 
246, 246. So, the next state corresponding to S2 is nothing but S6. From S4, the next state is nothing but X6, but from S6, the next state is S3. And for that, we have to apply a 1. Okay, so, if you apply a 1, so these are the next states. So, you know that S3 can be easily distinguished from X6 because X3, X1, X3 and X5 are equivalent and X2, X4 and X6 are equivalent. So, S3 and X6 are equivalent, not equivalent. S3 and X6 are not equivalent. So, by using 2 bit sequence, we can distinguish between states S2, S4 and S6. So, what do you apply? So, what do you do? So, uh, first you apply say for example, S2 and sorry, you can distinguish between these two because from S2 and S4, we are going to state S6 which are equivalent because S6 is equivalent with itself. But if you want to distinguish between S4 and S, S2 and S4 with S6, this can be very easily done because you can just see the figure. So, in this case, if you want to apply uh, from S2, if you apply a 1, you go to S6. Okay? So, now from S6, if you apply a 1, you go to state S3. So, from S6, S2, if you apply a 1, you go to S6. The next bit you apply, you go to X3. Okay? Now, from S6, if you apply a 1, so you apply a 1, you go to state S3 and uh, from S3, if you apply a 1, you go to state S2. Okay? So, what happens basically is that uh, by using 2 bit sequence. So, if you are uh, that means, if you apply the first bit sequence from S2, so you will be in either S2, S4 or S6 only. Okay? So, S2 if you apply a 1, you first bit input you go to S6 or if you apply a 0, you go to S4. So, from S2, if you apply a 1, you go to state S6 okay? and from uh, S6, if you apply a 1, okay? so you go to state S3. Okay? So, the output is always 1 in this case. If you apply, so, from here if you apply a 1, the output is 1. From S6 also if you apply the output is 1. Okay? Now, from S3, what do you do? From S3 you already know, from S3 you apply a 1. Okay? So, you S3 you apply a 1, the answer you get is 0 and from S6 if you apply a 1, if from S3 apply the 1, the answer is 0, sorry, answer is 1, sorry, the answer is 1 over here. So, there is a distinguishing. Okay? So, by uh, from S2 you apply a 1, you go to S6, output is 1, then again you apply a 1, the answer is a 1, but if you start from S6, you apply a 1, you get a 1, go to S3, again you apply a 1, here you get the answer as 0. So, this 1 and a 0 is different. So, by using the input sequence 1, 1, okay, uh, from S2 you get the outputs as 1, 1, but if you apply the same sequence 1, 1 from S6, the answer you get, output you get is 1, 0 and so it can be distinguished. So, you can see that by applying 2 bit sequence, I can distinguish between state S2, S4 with X6 that you can do. So, your next set becomes something like this S2, S4 is one set and S6 is the other set. So, S2 and S4 and S6 can be distinguished, S2 and S4 cannot be distinguished with each other by 2 bit inputs, but S2 and S4 can be distinguished with X6 by using a 2 bit input that is 1, 1. Okay? And we have found out that by no 2 bit inputs, we can distinguish between S1, S3 and S5 and similarly with no 2 bit input sequence, you can distinguish between S2 and S4. So, this is how you can come, you can just look at this slide. In the third stage, what we can do is that we will again try in the third stage. Now, we initially second stage we had S1, S3 and S5. Okay? Now, uh, we can easily see that if we apply some inputs like which we have done, you can actually distinguish between S1, S3 and S5 that you can easily find out. I am uh, not going into the details how you can go, how you have to do that. As a similar case, case we have seen for this one. As a similar case, we have seen for this one how we have differentiated between S2 and S4 in one class and S6 in another class. Similar way, you can find out that using a sequence of 3 bit runs, you can distinguish between S1 and S3 in one case and S5 in another case that you can easily find out. So, overall, you will find out that with two sequence numbers, S1, S3 and S5 cannot be distinguished. Uh, okay? and, uh, but with a 3 bit input sequence, you can distinguish between S1 and S3 will be 1 and S5 can be distinguished between this. Okay? But again, you will find out that S2 and S4, sorry this is not equivalent. So, you can find out that I am sorry about it. So, in this case again we will find out that S2 and S4 cannot be distinguished by 2 input sequence, but S2 and S4 can be distinguished with S6 in a 2 bit input sequence that already we have seen. Okay? But for distinguishing between S1 and S3 with S5, you require a 3 bit input sequence. Okay? So, this is again a very, very obvious that S2 and S4 uh, will be easily distinguished with X6 is a 3 bit e examples. Okay? So, just you have to repeat this step, I mean with, uh, we already we have distinguished between S1 and S3 with S5 in 3 steps in 3 input sequence that is what is being shown over here and we have distinguished between S2 and S4 in 
two inbuilt input sequence. Okay, so obviously three will also hold. So similarly, if you have to just extrapolate this manner, and you will find out that. We can just you can find out that I mean uh, you just have to repeat these steps so which is being already shown I mean discussed in this case. So, you just have to explore these slides and you can find out that S 3 and S 4 cannot be distinguished and S 1 and S 3 cannot be distinguished because you will find out that the circuit initially the system initially had how many states the system initially had uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, you can find out that by executing this uh, steps which I have told you uh, these are the steps these are all the steps which are written over here. So, you just using these steps I mean this is the how the this slide tells you what exactly happens which I have told you is written over here. So, uh, this it says that by applying 2 bit input sequence you can distinguish between S 2, S 4 together you can distinguish the S 6, but within any 2 bit input sequence you cannot distinguish between S 1, S 3 and S 5. But now applying a 3 bit input sequence you can find out that I can distinguish between S 1 and S 3 in one side and S 5 in another side, but if you apply this for 5, 6, 6 states, so 6 now 6 number of times you can find out that still S 2 and S 4 will be equivalent and S 1 and S 3 will be equivalent. So, this will be your equivalent states, they cannot be distinguished because now number of states are 6. So, uh, no 6 more I mean no 6 strings of length 6 can distinguish between S 2 and S 4. Similarly, no strings of length 6 can distinguish between S 1 and S 3. So, similarly, you so these things this will remain equivalent and other string states will be distinguishing. Now, you merge S 3 and S 4, S 1 and S 3 and the graph will look something like this. Now, that is what has been written over here. Okay? So, there is a there is a double run then that can distinguish between this and this. So, that is by using a string of length 2 you can distinguish between this, but any string of any length cannot distinguish between S 2 and S 4 that is going to be possible that is they are actually S 2 and S 4 are equivalent states. Okay? Now, it says that there are triple runs that can distinguish between this and this. So, that also how it is done you can easily see that is run with 1 1 1 from state 1 and S 5 gives output this and this respectively therefore, different differentiating S 1 from S 5. So, actually they are saying that you require 3 input strings, 3 bit input string to differentiate between S 1 and S 3 with S 5, but 2 bit input strings can differentiate between S 2 and S 4 with S 6, but any number of strings of any length cannot distinguish in between uh, S 2 and S 4 and S 1 and S 3. So, they will become equivalent uh, states and finally, we have this graph. So, once we have this minimized, so in this case only 4 states I mean 2 2 states could be merged. So, your graph structure becomes similar simple, then what you have to do is that then you have to merge this uh, states. So, that your circuit I means diagram will become small, then you have to go for state encoding. As I told you, so if you require k bits to encode n states, then, then, then what is the possibility? So, obviously, if the k bits used to represent your states, uh, states I mean use a k bits used to encode. So, there are 2 to the power k possibilities will be there and if there are n states, so the permutation this number will be very, very high. So, in this case, what is the best state encoding and which one will apply to which is a very difficult problem to solve. So, in this lecture, we shall describe a heuristic which is called the Mustang heuristic is a very simple heuristic which will tell you which state encoding to choose and apply to which. But again this will be a non-optimal solution may not be an optimum solution why because the idea is very simple uh, because I mean the state space is so large and we will be trying by heuristic we will try to find one of the some of it will uh, I mean as already discussed in the last class that what is the problem with heuristic based optimization. So, it will try to figure out some good parts of the solution space and you will have a stopping criteria kind of a thing and you stop which may not be your optimum situation. Okay? So, we will see the heuristic to do this because exploring this big state space is very time consuming. Okay. So, what is, what is the basic idea of Mustang? So, what it does it actually if it finds that there are 2 states which are leading to the same fan out then it tries to dif they differentiate by 1 bit kind of a thing like say for example, if you the encoding 0 1 you encode it at 0 0. Sorry, so it is 0 0 sorry. So, what is the idea is that if 2 codes are adjacent if they are if they differentiate by 1 bit. So, actually 1 bit are the we always know that if the there are any encoding or any states or whatever. So, if they are having a single bit difference we know that they are compatible like 0 1 and 0 0 like 1 0 and say 0 sorry 1 1 they are again compatible there is 1 bit difference. So, they are actually called code adjacent. Now, the idea here is that 
those state pairs we have transition leading to the same states are assigned adjacent codes like for example these two states are there they are going at the same fan out so you give at same i mean what you call adjacent codes or compatible codes to that so how do that lead, what is the, how do that lead to good idea i mean less number of states let us illustrate with the example so what mustang this is a very simple idea you will find out the states in your finite state machine which is having a common fan out say if these two states are having a common fan out you try to assign some uh, state encoding to this which are having code adjacent that is in case 0 1 sorry uh, uh, 1 0 and 0 so, so 1 bit difference you try to do that now doing this how it is advantageous already we know that if there are two states like this or any two bits which are compatible very near by each other so they can be minimized because there is only one bit difference the same philosophy was used in tabular method for finding out the prime implicates so if you have two and i mean two mean terms where only one literal is different we can easily get optimized like say for example x y bar plus x y so there is on say one bit difference is y y prime so you can take, take y x here y plus y prime plus y that is equal to 1 so it will easily get reduced so if uh, you, i mean if you find out cases i mean terms which is having one bit literal difference they can be merged to do this one so let us see this this is the case so s1 and s2 so we are encoding at 1 0 and this one is encoded as 0 0 and the output bit is something like this so you can write this i mean lot of other states will be there but still the function of s0 prime is this one uh, so x the input is 1 okay a state is 1 0 and again this state is 0 0. So, this is the input is x. So, input is 1, present state is 1 0. Okay. So, present input is 1, the present state is 1 0, you get an answer as 1 okay. and this is the uh, this one and again you can see over here that is the s 1 prime. So, if the uh, input is 1 okay input is 1 and the present state is 0 0, the again the output is 1 that is what is being reflected over here. So, just I mean we are actually having the dotted lines because there can be other states to do this. So, but one idea it is showing is that. So, just if for if you want to represent uh, this small uh, subgraph. So, what it is saying? So, it is saying that if your input is 1 that is input is 1 and your present state is 1 0. So, the our next state this this bit that is uh, S 0 prime is 1. Also, if it is say that the present state is 0 0 input is 1 then the next state is this state is also 1. So, this is 1 1 0. So, this is 1 1 0 corresponding to this term this is 1 this is become some mean term and again is 1 0 0. So, this is say 1 0 0. So, this term is actually corresponding to this guy okay. and what else. Uh, so, this corresponds to 1 uh, 0 1 okay. and this corresponds to 1 1 0 kind of a thing. Okay. Now, you can see over here that uh, the other uh, sorry this is about the output string you can also check over here. So, what is the output? So, the output is 1 in the case uh, when the input is 1 and the uh, state is 0 and the output is 1 in this case this is the case. So, in both the cases the output is 1. Now, you can easily see that easily I can minimize this because there is 1 bit difference over here. So, you can easily minimize the case of output is x. Uh, x 1 prime and then this x this this will get cut off ok and similarly so that is being shown in the next slide. So, you can easily minimize this this structure will get minimized because there is one bit difference. So, here is a one bit difference in this case also this is a one bit difference and in on this case also there is a one bit difference. So, there being a one bit difference. So, this uh, minimization can be possible. So, in other words whenever we that is the idea of Mustang. So, if you have a similar fan out state and there are these two state leading to this. So, you should have a one bit difference. So, if you have a one bit difference. So, the state representations will be uh, quite simple in this case. So, uh, because this corresponds to 0 1 and this corresponds to 0 0 in you know, similarly in all the cases. So, you can you have been able to do a what you say a minimization. Okay. So, that is actually state minimization. So, well, how mesh trunks work? Now, you can see that now there is a bit, little bit problem if I directly use this philosophy. The philosophy is there always say for example, I always want to try to have if some states are there. So, if this is a common fan out and also you can say that there is another state which is having a common fan out. So, I should try to have this is 0 0 this is 0 1 okay. now this is one bit difference and say this is I want to put it as uh, say I have to put it as 0 0 1 0 then you can say that I have to put it as 1 0. So, in this case you can see uh, and again so this is 0 0 this is 0 1 so one bit difference again one bit difference is there. 
Now, you can just see that for example, if I have also have a state transition from this to this. So, what happens you can see that. So, here this is ok, this is 0 0 0 1 1 bit difference these two state we can see that uh, this is 0 0 oh, 1 0. So, again a 1 bit difference, but now if there is a path from this state to this state then there is a 2 bit difference. So, always it may not be possible to have this adjacent business that is always you may not be possible for you to give what do I say uh, that is 1 bit difference in all the cases. Because I mean it be, then it may lead to a I mean what do you call hot one encoding. So, in this case you may have you may have to give only 1 bit is 1 in for this state that is actually called hot one encoding. So, you can say that 1 2 1 2 3 4 states are there. So, I can say that this is 4 bit this is 1. So, in this case I may have to put it as 0 0 1 0. So, this one be uh, this one will be uh, 0 1 0 0 and this will be 1 0 0 0. So, only 1 bit is high for the corresponding. So, the state encoding will take a huge number of bits to do that, ok, but that will be possible because the hot one means only 1 bit is 1 in the whole encoding. So, you can do that, but that is not allowed. So, we do not uh, we do not have such a huge space for doing the state encoding. So, if you are using a 2 bit encoding to do this, so here it is not possible this is 0 0 this is 0 1 you can put it as 1 0 as I told you 1 0, but again uh, this is say 0 0 you can put sorry uh, 1 1 you can put it over here, but again now this, this is a transition from here to here the 2 bit difference. So, you may not be always possible to do this ok. So, uh, we they actually have applied an algorithm to do that. So, in the Mustang now will actually tell you that how to start it not all just this example shows that not all the states you can follow which is having adjacent codes. Then which one you will give preference whether you will give preference that that you I mean you apply a uh, 0 0 here and you apply a 0 1 here or the other way that is you are giving preference to this link or you are going to give preference to this link. So, which links you are going to give as preference. So, Mustang actually gives you an idea of finding out an attraction graph ok and it will give some weights to the edges and this and depending on the edges you can you will give priority that which of the two nodes we having a common fan out will be given adjacent encoding. So, uh, the edges which are having a higher weights will be given and the nodes corresponding to the edges having higher weights will be given first priority to assign adjacent codes and you will keep on doing it. And of course, you will find out after some time that some of the states even if they have a ad, what you call a common fan out may not be you may not be able to give them a adjacent encoding. So, that is the idea. So, you actually uh, whenever two states one has a common fan out the uh, weight of the edge is increased that uh, that means the how it works. So, it, be, be, it builds an attraction graph. So, if two nodes S 1 and S 2 have a common fan out state the weight of that edge is increased. So, if two states say S 1 and S 2 have lot of common fan outs then what do you do. So, if an edge has if an edge has lot of common fan outs if two nodes say S 1 and S 2 have lot of common fan outs then their weights will be starting increasing. And if there are two nodes S 3 and S 4 they have only one or two nodes as common fan out then what do you do then it will have a less weight. So, that means, the two nodes S 1 and S 2 which has lot of a common fan out nodes will be given higher weights and you will try to give them adjacent codes compared to nodes which have a less number of fan out similar same fan outs ok. Once the attraction graph is found we try to assign adjacent code to pair of states having strong attraction that means, we will select those pair of nodes. I mean uh, say S 1 and S 2 which have a large number of common fan outs. Then correspond to the in between nodes which do not have that many number of common fan out nodes. It is true that it is always true that it may not be able to possible to assign adjacent code to all the state pairs. In that case we start with the state pairs that have the highest weight. In, in other words state pairs having a most number of common fan outs and assign adjacent codes. We keep on doing it I mean of course, some of the state pairs will not have this one. Okay. So, we will just explain the idea it is a very simple algorithm what you do you find out all state pairs which are having some common fan outs. So, the number of state pairs having more number of con common fan outs will be having a larger weights corresponding to the uh, states which is having a I mean uh, you have to understand the corresponding to the states which are having a less number of common fan outs nodes. Now, you give weights and you start with the nodes having the highest weight you assign them some uh, uh, assign them some weights you the no node pairs with the highest number of weights you assign some adjacent codes and you keep on doing it. Okay. Now, we have we give you the algorithm. So, that is simple. So, once the weights has been given. So, what do you do once the weights has been uh, defined or weights has been given. So, you just select the node pair with the highest number of weights assign them adjacent codes then you take the next node pair having the next highest weight and you keep on doing it. But now, we see how to obtain this we start how to obtain the weights. Okay. So, this is a this we represent the matrix by two graphs I mean sorry two uh, what you call two matrices. So, this corresponds to three uh, nodes this is an arbitrary graph. So, it is S 1 ok this is S 3 and this is 
S4. Okay, so there is a the S P represents the present state and this one the next state. So from S1 present to X1 next is an H, so there is a loop. Okay, that is being shown over here. Okay, and uh, from uh, S1 to S4. Okay, so from S1 to S4, you can see. From S1 to S4, you can see. Uh, sorry, S1 to S3. From S1 to S3, you can see there is an edge. Okay, so because this is a matrix is a one, so you have an edge. From S1 to S4, there is no zero, so there is no edge. Similarly, from S3 to S1, there is a node. From S3 to S1, you will have an edge. Okay, then. Uh, from S3 to S3, there is a no zero, so no loop, nothing, no transition will be there. From S3 to S4, there will be a transition because this is one. From S4 to S1, there is a transition because of this one. And from S1 to S4 to S4 itself, there is a transition. So you put a self. -loop. So this is the matrix representing S3, ST matrix. Okay, and this another matrix that is output matrix. So it says that SP. 1. So, S 1 1 z equal to 1. So, that means what? That means there is an outgoing edge from 1 with output is a 1. So, you can say that uh, this is a 1, this is 0 0 that you can say. That means what? It is, it is saying that, that is, there is at least one edge which is coming out of present state S 1 whose output is 1. Similarly, for S 3 you can say that this is 1 1 and this is also 1 1. Okay, that is from S 3 there is an edge. In, in this case, both the edges are outgoing edges of S 3 the output is a 1. From S 4 both these are 0 that is what is being shown. It is saying that S P 4 Z 0 that means all the outgoing edges of from S 4 the output is 0. So, this for this graph we actually draw this matrix in a very simple way. Now, if you want to find out that uh, what is the uh, attraction between uh, say uh, two states let S T be the ith row okay, ith row and of Okay, so um, this in general, this, this is what is being said. A uh, one in row, this one indicates that there is a self loop and all those things. Similarly, a uh, one in SP one and indicates that there is outgoing edge from one whose output is one. So that is what is being said. Similarly, one in SP one row and Z column, that is this one, it is saying that means there is an outgoing edge from S one whose output is one. Okay, so that is being said. So whatever I have discussed about drawing the matrix for this graph is represent is, is being told in this slide. Okay, so now you have to find out the attraction. So if you want to find out the attraction between say S3 and S4, that is say I, we call it this is a I and this is J. So once you do that, so what is the formula? This is K. So what is the K? K is the number of bits required for encoding. Okay, and then STI. So this is your matrix STI. So this is I at row you are taking say. So for example, you are finding out the attraction between S3 and S4. So this is I. So SP3, this row you have to take. Okay, and S T J transpose. So, you are considering say between 3 and 4. So, this 4 will become your J and you have to take a transpose of this one okay? and you have to do this multiplication plus I ith row and jth column you transpose for this matrix. Okay? So, if you have to if you find out the I and J are 3 and 4. So, if you have to find out the attraction between node number 3 and 4. So, how do you do that? So, you have to take the ith row S3. So, this is the ith number of bits, there are 3 states. So, number of bits required encoding is 2 that is equal to k over here. That is being told over by the equation. This equation is saying how can you find out the attraction between 2 nodes. So, k is 2 in this case, i is you are finding out the between 3, node 3. So, this what is the row? Row is 1 0 1 that is ith row. Okay? So, you have to write 1 0 1 over here. Now, fourth matrix that is the j is 4. So, you are finding attraction between 3 and 4. So, this is j. So, in this case you can see j transpose. So, what is j over here? So, j is 1 0 1, but you have to take the transpose. So, this is actually is this transpose okay? plus this dot this. So, what is this one? So, this one is the i, i this 3 and 4. So, this is 3 uh, that is rho, uh, z 3 and z 4. So, if you look at this matrix, so this is z 3 and this is z 4. So, it is 1 star 0. So, this is nothing but 1 star 0. So, if you do this, this is gone, you find out the product, the value is 4. So, you can write down a 4 over here. Similarly, you have to find out the uh, attraction between S3 and S1. So, in this case, S3 and S1, if you find out, so this will be S3 and this one will be S1. Similarly, matrix you can find out, will be value will be 3. From S1 and S4, you want to find out, then it will be S1 and S4. You do the computation, this will be 2 and so forth. Now, you have got the weights. Okay, now, you can find out that between S3 and S4, the weight is highest is 4. So, you take S3 and S4 and uh, give some encoding. So, this is the highest row. So, you can see that. Uh, so, in this case, you have applied 1, 1 and 1, 0. So, this is in this case is adjacent 1. So, it is very simple. Now, the once the rows has been given, so you can find out that 
uh, which is the storm in uh, see for you corresponding to the first the weights has already been defined now when the one when the weights has been defined now you can see for s3 the weights is 3 plus 4 is 7 so i mean the so the, this uh, this is these two nodes you can say sorry let us just find out what does that mean so now you can you have to see that this uh, this two pair this attraction between two this is 4 this is 3 and this two pair is so, 2. So, these two are highly attracted pair. That means, uh, the, the number of fan out requirement for this S3 and S4 is the highest and similarly you can keep you think of keeping the for you start with 4 then you go for 3 and 2 and then you keep on doing the adjacent encoding. So, in this case you take this weight and you put 1 1 and 1 0. So, 1 bit adjacent C is there and you go to S3. So, here also you have 1 0 is there you put 0 1 is there. So, adjacent C is 0 1, but you can see that there this is not adjacent pair because it is 1 0 and 1 or 2 bit differences there, but again this is the lowest weight. So, this will not get the priority. So, we have started with this one put some adjacent weights, then you go for this one second row we put some adjacent code, but again when we are coming to the last weight. So, we cannot do this because we are exhausted of the number of encoding weights. So, this is how it completes the process. So, you have weights as 1 1. 1, 0 and 0, 1. So, if you look at our first example, when you are counting the number of literals to be 11 and 10, so you will find out that if you are using this encoding, the number of literals was 10 and if you are using some other encoding in which we had a state encoding of 0, 0 or something like this, the number of literals was 11 and this was not good. So, you can find out that Munstang actually tells you the attraction between the nodes and then you can go about this. So, once you have find out, first you have to find out the equivalent states by the theory I have told you, you minimize that, then you use the Munstang algorithm which is an heuristic. So, you find weights for each of the state pairs. So, you take the highest weights, put adjacent codes and keep on doing it. Finally, you may find out that you are going from 4, 3, 2, 1 from highest weights to lowest weight you are going on. Then in the end you may find out that one state pair you may not be able to assign adjacent codes and so forth. You have to keep on doing this one. Okay, And then finally, you, some of the states will have adjacent codes and some of them will not have. So, once the state adjacent matrix, I mean adjacent mat, some of the states with adjacent codes have been applied and some of the states the code could not be applied. So, finally, you have a state encoding. So, once the state encoding is done, you go for this table and implement it using a uh, two level binary minimization. So, this is how we actually come to a finite state machine synthesis. The process is very simple. If you write in a nutshell, so what is happening? First, we are finding out the equivalent states. So, how do you are finding out the equivalent state two states s1 and s2 are equivalent if there does not exist any length string which can distinguish them and what is the length of the string maximum the number of states in the graph that is the first step so you do that and merge all the equivalent states next what you do next you go for a mustang or some other heuristic algorithm to find out good state encoding so you try to find out states which is having a large number of common fan outs and apply them as adjacent codes. Some of these states you may not pay state match you may not be able to do this because of the fact I told you. Then you give a state encoding. So, once the good state encoding has been given you go for this table representation and then binary represent binary minimization what we have already done. So, this is how we go for minimization of uh, a finite state machine and what actually the pre-processing steps that is state encoding state minimization and state encoding converts these circuits to a combinational circuit kind of a thing. So, that the combinational synthesis algorithms can be easily applied. Okay. Now, we are going to the question answer session. So, if the, what is the question? The question is saying that if there is an STG with n states. So, we know that log 2 n upper ceiling is required to do the uh, is required to encode these states. Then you do state reduction and by equivalence say so the number of states minimize this say n minus c. And then where the reduction is say very very less in some case. So, it remains something like that. That may be one or two states might has been reduced, but if you still take uh, if you still take the log and the upper ceiling then what happens actually this it still remains the same. That is by reducing the number of states we do not we cannot reduce the number of bits required to encode. Like for example, initially you have 6 states. So, you require 3 bits to encode, but now by reducing the state by equivalence now we have 5 states still you require 3 bits to encode. Okay, then you do not gain anything by merging equivalent states, but still why do you do that? You do not gain anything means you do not gain anything in the number of flip flops or the number of bits in state encoding, but still why do you merge equivalent states? The answer is if you are merging equivalent states from say 6 states to 5 states still you require 3 bits to encode, but now initially you had 0 0 0 to 1 1 1. So, 8 encoding were possible and you have to using this 8 encoding you have to encode 6 states. But now merging, merging equivalent states now you have 5 states. So, 1 state you have saved. Number of bits remains are same that is not where same, but using this 8 encoding possible now you are you have to encode 5 states. So, there is more flexibility and Munstein will succeed a high probability is there that Munstein or some any heuristic of state encoding will succeed to give adjacent state 
transition state encoding if the number of states are less corresponding to a case compared to a state compared to a case where the number of states are more. So, we always go for state encoding even if the number of state uh, sorry we always go for state minimization even if that does not lead to any saving or do not lead to any kind of what you can what, what do I say uh, even if they do not lead to any kind of gains in terms of bits, but still we have flexibility in the encoding because now we have after state minimization now we have more state bits to encode less number of states. So, any good heuristics to put adjacent state encoding will succeed. So, that is what is the reason for this one. So, with, with this we come to the end of this lecture and the next lecture we will see multi level implementation because in the all the lectures till now we have seen that two level implementation is good and we have seen lot of algorithms for that, but in practical scenario uh, two level implementations are not possible because of the requirement of high fan in the gates. So, we have to go for multi level implementation that we will see in the next lecture. Thank you.